It's your boy Steve Cuss, and I'm locked in with the Hood Journals. Times change, but I'm still here. Everybody else, it just disappear. I've been down bad, I don't have no fear. I treat every day like a new year. I'm Welcome to the Hood Journal. I'm here with Steve Cuts, John Ms. Manny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Manny, I like to sort of all my interviews by giving my guests a thoughts of appreciation. The longer way the interview, long overdue. Every time I ask somebody in Oswego, yo, who do you want to see next on the platform? They always bring your name up. You saving a lot of niggas' lives by cutting out hair, doing your thing. You a hard worker. Cut mad people in one day. Uh, and outside of even your talent, feel me? You a dope dude, always show love, always supportive, always a positive dude. Every time I see you, never switched up, never did nothing funny. So I appreciate you, appreciate your work ethic, and I'm ready to get the conversation started. Uh, thank you, bro. I appreciate you for trying to answer me and all that. Thank you for everybody who shouted me out, too. Um, <laughs> I give love, too. I got to see all those vids. So, yeah, I got to catch up. I bet. Say that, say that. Um, Manny, first question I want to get into. Uh, you mind telling me where you're from? I'm um, from the Bronx, NYC. Yes, sir. What part? I'm um, from Burnside, and my shop is on Tremont, on the concourse. Okay, bad, bad, bad. Say no more. Um, so, Manny, talk to me about your upbringing. Talk to me about uh, where you're from, where it was like growing up on that side. You, uh, family and friends you grew up with, you know, shit like that. So, you know, living in the Bronx, like, it was calm, man. I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like people put, like, negative at, like a negative light on, like, the city life or some shit like that, like, where it's dangerous. It is dangerous in a certain way, but, you know, like, you got to make the most out of it. Like, you could come from that environment, but still come up on top, I say. So, life in the Bronx, it was calm. I got into a few altercations, but nothing crazy. I would say that. Nothing life-altering. Life okay. So, yeah, that's all I would like to say about that. So, he said uh, certain things, like... Yeah, talk to me about uh, friends you made, your family... So I have uh, a group of friends that those are my guys. We call ourselves the uh, Shmoney. We like okay, that, yeah. that's my thing. That we as kids, we, we those are my, these are my middle school friends, and we're still friends. They were just here uh, last weekend, but those are my guys. We used to have rapper names. Like my my that's how my name actually came to be. Because in middle school we would have rapper names. Like one of them was a like, little Forston. Okay. Then was little Windex, <laughs> and then mine was little Sweep. <laughs> so then even my Cash App tag is little Sweep. Like, Wait, why they give you a little sweep? It's just like, I don't know. But this is how I always was. Like, it was just like, we came up with our own. I was like, hmm, I never seen a rapper with a name Lil Sweep. I'm going to name myself that. And okay. it was like kind of funny at the time. So it was like, all right, but. So then the time came where I had to like, I was like, damn, I need a barber name. And then all of my friends called me Sweep. I was like, damn, like, I have a bunch of nicknames, but I'm going to keep that. I feel like it's different. That's okay. how I came with Sweep Cuts. That's tough. That's yeah, tough. That's um, what's your relationship like with um with the Shmoney gang today? It was those are those are my guys to this day. Like I love I love them. Like I have heartfelt conversations with them every day. I talk to them every day. Those are my guys, and they they're always gonna be they're always gonna be my guys to the day. That's how I always say. Like, That's fine. I keep my group tight, small. So we're actually uh, you could say a big group, probably like eight of us. But okay. but you know like. Now, not to say we can't add people into the group, but, you know, like, that connection is probably, like, I probably won't make it with a lot of people other than right. So, yeah. That's fine to have, like, a solid group of friends, like, that you had since childhood and you still with them, like, as y'all become adults and y'all get to see each other both. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm, um, what did you learn most about yourself growing up in the Bronx? So, stay ten toes, really, like... There's a bunch of stuff, especially in the barbershop where it's like that you don't see. So like there was one altercation in the barbershop where there was some guy. He's the big dog on the block. He wanted a haircut. Basically, he he basically endangered all of us saying like, oh, if I don't get a haircut right now, like this whole shop is getting shot up. Mm. As a barber, you just like, damn, like you don't know what to do. Your pride gets into the way because I'm from the Bronx as well. Like we're very prideful people where the right. player was just like. Come on, bro. I don't want to cut your hair at all, bro. Especially right. after you disrespect me like that. But it comes to a point where even the owner of the shop was like, yo, someone got to cut him. Or this place. They, they've had altercations with him before where it was like, it was crazy. Right. But yeah, it was just stay 10 toes. That's all I would say because it's just like, you could talk to somebody over here. Oh, one thing I also want to say is like, not to say like my personality, it gets different, right. but... I feel like I know how to talk to certain people because of where I'm from. So, like, I could talk to someone who's a scammer or who's, like, you know, a big boss. And I'm just like, 
like, what's up, bro? Like, we could have a normal conversation. I like that. But right. I could also be talking to someone up here and I could still talk to them myself, very genuine. So right. it's just, the Bronx also showed me that, you know, um, I could, that it gave me the capability to talk to a variety of people okay. and to not trust as many people. Even if they give you love, sometimes it might be for other reasons that you might not know. So right. you got to watch your back at all times. I bet. Say that. Um, Manny, do you remember when you got your first haircut? No, nah, yeah, I do remember. It was um, it was my boy Lenin and Joseph. They were kids. Now they're they're high schoolers now, but they're kids. Like, and then uh, I just thought it was during quarantine. I was just mm. I was getting myself shape ups. I was like, I was posting every day, like, yo, like, who needs a haircut? Like, it's gonna be for free. It's quarantine. Like, who needs it? And then these two kids they hit me up, like, yo, like he pulled it to my crib, pulled it to my crib. You know, it was quarantine. Mask, right, gloves. Right. My 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 phone I'll have on a zip off bag so I come in I look professional. I come in I look professional like, like yo I look take everything clean. I cut both of the hair. Looking back at it, it was disgusting. It was trash. Makes but, sense. Makes sense. But shh, they loved it. Like there was kids, so they was like, oh my god, like shape up. Even though it was it was even sharp, it was so good. Like and I still cut them to this day. I give them like I basically give them free hair because for okay. life. Those are my guys. Those are the studio guys. So then, yeah. But so you said that you gave that that first haircut for free. Uh, yeah, those two haircuts for free, and like as the days go on, like I used to give them free haircuts yeah, yeah, to yeah. this day. No, I just want to make sure because, like, I remember during quarantine, mm -hmm. the same nigga that cut my hair for twenty before quarantine was charging me fifty during quarantine. Yeah. yeah. What was it about? Um, you finding this new passion that you was willing to take that risk, even though you wasn't really getting paid for it. So I like when I first started, my passion was, was crazy. Like I had, like nothing would stop me. If someone called me, like yo, can I get a haircut? He's all the way in Brooklyn. I'm mm -hmm. taking it. Like I, I would be like yo, it's free, hundred percent for free because my passion was just like I wanted to learn. Right. I saw the vision where like I kind of manifested in a way where I was like I want, I, I want this in my life, I want this in my life. So I know it had to come with steps. I can't be, I can't be charging people for the work that I was doing because, right. I, in my opinion, it wasn't barber, it wasn't barber work. Right. So like, I, if they call me, I, I used to go maybe four people a day in quarantine, different places. Yo, Brooklyn, someone called me. Like, Yo, I need a haircut. I pull it all the way to Brooklyn. Yo, I need someone in Queens. I, mind you, no car in the train. Mm. Not getting paid not a single dollar. Just straight up tips. Yo, here's ten dollars for coming. Like, <laughs> damn, ten dollars. Like, come for, for I doing that now. It's like. It's crazy, but I had to put in that work, and I feel like it was worth it because I feel like I'm doing stuff now. Right, right. Yeah, so, but I guess you're reaping the benefits of that hard work that you was putting in back in the day, trying to get those reps and trying to be the best that you could be. Yeah. Um, who was it that inspired you to start cutting hair? So it was um, my boy. His name's Cheeky the Barber. He left to North Carolina, mm. but I was so as a kid. So, like, you see how everybody back in the day, they were getting $12 cuts, $15. I was the only kid getting $25, $30 cuts. Mm. I was I was balling, per se. Like, <laughs> I had the best bar. He was, he was young. He's probably, like, 24, 25 now. But back then, he was, like, 20, 21. Okay. And he was charging this, and he was he was nice. Like, he was crazy. He had the whole block hot. And then, so, I, I went to him, and I had all my friends coming to him. So, uh, me, but me, I would get a cut every, every seven days. <laughs> Straight to the barbershop. <laughs> nah, every seven days. Like, for yeah, real. yeah, I have videos of my boy Cheeky because, like, we just got so close. Like, he was, like, my big brother in a way. Mm -hmm. So, then I just saw him cutting hair. He was hilarious. So, he didn't really speak the best English. So, his accent, like, he would, like, use his accent to, like, mm -hmm. like for fun, for, for, for humor. He will get into someone's ear and make a joke. But, yeah, it was just, like, so I loved his, his lifestyle. I loved the way that he was working. And it inspired me to be a barber and just... It took off from there. I asked him, like, yo, like, you think you can teach me a little bit? And then he started teaching me a little bit, a little bit. When well, well, I was in the shop getting a haircut, he would teach me, like, oh, this is how you do your shape up and stuff like that. And then I would go home and do the same. That's fire. So, um, yeah. Have you been able to cut Chicky's hair ever since you started cutting hair? No, but I was able to cut his two little brothers' hair. Because he moved to North Carolina, but he yeah. left his two little brothers here, you know, with his, with his mom and his dad. But And then he, he was like, like, yo, man, I saw you getting good. Like, yo, you got to cut my little brothers. I was like, yeah, bring them. Boom. They both came. That's fine. He paid me. He paid me 50 for each. That's fine. Yeah. So yeah. Was quick and that's when I was still on my come up, but he saw that I was like doing better, so... He paid me good. It was fire. That's fire. Yeah, I was gonna ask like last last question or not. How proud is Cheeky 
to see you and the success that you've been able to achieve going from that young kid that was getting those lit $25 cuts to now mm -hmm. niggas is paying you way more than $25 to cut the hair how proud is Cheeky nah, of my, you my boy Cheeky so yeah he still calls me uh, like probably like a, once every couple months but just to check in like oh man I see what you're doing there like oh, he, oh every time I post he comments like fire fire That's like right. I need to get like you because it's like I don't know he probably still sees the passion in me like when you're a barber there's someone your passion like uh goes down a bit but you know you see another barber's working like damn like he's working like i gotta get to work too so that's right. there's always love on his it's on his side of the hand and love for me too of course i got um so manny when did you know i don't want to know yet when you created sweep cuts but when did you know that you were actually good like when did you know that the competition and that you were um improving your quality of your haircuts like when did you know that so i first auditioned for a hair uh so i first auditioned uh to get into a barbershop and mm -hmm. it was so one of the barbers that used to come out here after chica left to north carolina his papaleta uh he he was like yo he texted me like, yo i've been seeing you getting better like you want to come and try for the shop and i was like i'm in there that's tough yeah and then i was like and the, the boss, he liked how I work. He was like, yeah, like, you need a few tweaks, but we're going to get you good. And then he, he he blessed me with a good price for the chair. And it was, ever since that, it was, it was amazing. That's it. I started, and after a few, like, uh, two months, I had clients. It was crazy. That's fire. That's how it what was it like when you started getting those first clients at, at your own chair at this bar shop? You said, this opportunity. Like, how did that feel? Man, that felt so good, bro. Like, because I was like... I used to go for like two hundred dollars in my pocket, or like say like my my rent there. But like, damn, like sometimes I waste more money than I thought I would have. Right. So when I finally started getting my clientele, it was like everything I lived for. It was like my dream. Like I wrote this down in my notebook. Like yo, I'm gonna get clientele by March. Mm. I was like, I'm gonna get clientele by March 2021. By March 2021, I was like finally rolling in like those five six heads a day. I was chilling. That's all I really needed at the time. I was like 17 years old. So That's fine. those five six heads a day for 20 25 dollars. What else could I ask for? Right, that's fine. Um, when did you officially create Sweep Cuts? Sweep Cuts was during that time, I think in I think March or April of 2021. At first, it was just like a regular barber page. Like, not even barber, it was like my page. It was like right. many. And then Sweep Cuts, I was like, like, yo, I need a barber. Like, I've been trying to get, I've been getting a book, five, six heads. Like, people are like, what's your barber name? They've been calling Manny. Like, like sometimes I need something new. So, I, was, I had this idea. I, I, was, I wrote down in my in my room mm -hmm. uh, I didn't write that I drew a picture of what I wanted it would look nothing like how it looks now <laughs> but um, I wrote I did a picture and then I sent and then I was looking over through IG like logo creators and I saw someone in Europe and he he just blessed up for a good price that's fine and that was just me and I switched to sweet cuts and then and then once I switched to sweet cuts my page kind of boom boom because it was like a whole new, new rebranding that's fine yeah and it just turned up after that I best say that um so you said that you started sweep cuts in about april 2021 you start your freshman year of college in august of 2021 yeah. um talk about that transition from filming and you say you just created and your page is booming but now you gotta leave you gotta go upstate for a few months bro, talk about that transition broke my heart bro <laughs> broke my heart like because i just started getting clients like i thought i was leaving them like my business model back then it was a lot different from before where like I didn't I didn't have that security with my clients. Like I thought they were all just gonna leave and all that stuff. So I was heartbroken. At first I didn't even want to go to college. I thought that was like like nah I need to be a barber. Like right. yeah, but as time goes on I'm glad I came here because I really did find things that like I if I stayed in the city I would have never knew. I literally probably would have just been cutting hair twenty four seven. Right, right. But for me now that's not my end goal whatsoever and we'll probably get to that later on. But mm -hmm. um so yeah, it's just like even when I transitioned, I started EOP. I'm an EOP student, That's so I left for a month before going into real school. So I started cutting all the EOP kids. It was a struggle cutting all. I had to like for the first week, I was like, "Yo, bro, I'm a barber. Like, come on, bro, you gotta let me cut your hair. I cut it for free, so, this is, so I could just show everybody." Jeez. And then I cut my boy Amari. I said, "June, shout out to him. He was That's my roommate in so EOP." And then everybody loved the cut, and I just started. I started getting booked in EOP. And then when I came back, I already had the clientele in the school. That's fire. Shout out to Mari, Illuminar Platform. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, so I guess, how do you balance being a college student and cutting hair? So that is a struggle. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I still struggle to this day, to be very honest with you. But um, it's like, 
last my last my first my freshman year in reality was way worse than this year. I was working about forty to forty five hours a week. Damn. I didn't know how to manage my time. I would that's why I was struggling in school probably like the highest grade was like a B. Highest, highest. Like maybe that's, <laughs> that's like an if. Yeah, but in reality it was C's. But yeah, I was just like I didn't know because I came from working 50, 50 to fifty fifty to sixty hours in the city. I thought I could come here and do the same, but the school stuff it really shows you where it's like you're really a full time student. Like though you like those four or five classes you might think, oh four or five classes not a lot, bro. I'm just gonna kill you, bro. But as uh, you're really handling two jobs at once, but this semester I, I came to understand I only work about the twenty five to thirty hours, which is like still considered a lot for some college mm-hmm. students, but since I did so much last my previous semester, I'm I'm doing way better. I take two off days. So I'm able to do my work. I, I got some B's now. Yes, so, sir. Yeah, I'm yes, just sir. chilling. Yeah, yeah. Um, was it difficult to um have that discipline to work less hours a week since you love doing it so much? Was that was that difficult? Was that easy? Um. Uh, transition for you? It was a super easy transition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I came in this semester. I was, I was like, damn, I got so much free time. I want to go to the gym. Okay. okay. Now, nah, like, I feel really good. Like, so it's something I never felt before in reality. Because even in the city, since I was working so long hours, I didn't have time to go to the gym. Or the case maybe, so I would really, I would lose it. But yeah, now I have time to go to the gym. I have time to hang out with friends, socialize, all that stuff. So mm-hmm. that's that's one thing I recommend everybody. Like, if you, especially if you get a job off campus, you gotta. You gotta like really schedule. Like, money is important, but right. it isn't the end of the world. If say you you miss uh, if you miss out on a day of work to so maybe hang out with your friends because maybe you right. might need it. Your mental is really is really the biggest thing in, in your life, really. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Um. So we kind of skipped ahead a little bit. Um. I want to kind of talk about the summer of 2022 in regards to sweep cuts and in regards to your work. What's the biggest difference you notice? Uh, as a barber from the summer 2021 to the summer 2022? Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, 2021, in reality, I was upstate because I was in EOP. Yeah. But I still, okay, okay. So, summer 2021, when I came back in the summer to the city, just yeah. for two weeks in between EOP and going back to regular class, I was in the city in the Bronx. Right. 30 people went. So, it was the day before I left to real school. Like, so, you know, it was a five hour drive from the city to Oswego. So, right. um, so basically, I started at eight thirty a.m. I stopped cutting at five forty nine a.m. So basically, like twenty four <laughs> oh, hour shift. But then, so then my family didn't want to leave around like seven, so we could get there around like you know like eleven. So I was like, so I I had no haircut as well. So I'm like, I bet I'm not gonna go see. I was like, this don't put me to an hour. So I went after I, went, after I started cutting my last client at like five forty nine. Boom! I went to the mirror, so I get myself a little shape up. <laughs> And I went like that, and I was in the road. I oh my god, I get to pack either. <laughs> so I packed in an hour. I just packed everything in the suitcase, and boom, I left. It was like seven. Eight, oh, I, in a matter of an hour, I was able to get myself a shape of impact. So now it's chill. And I didn't even go to sleep. I think I, I, just, I slept like I went a whole like twenty four hours while sleeping too. But and then, but compared to uh, this summer that just passed, it was like it's uncomparable in a way because. I really, I, I really love like the clients I made. Like those are really my guys. Like they're like considered my family. Like in a way, because I appreciate. I text them all the time. Like yo, how you doing? I catch up with them, and they text me like yo, when you gonna come back? Like I miss you, bro. Like it's not even on some stuff where it's like a haircut. Like they generally like want to talk to me. They want like sometimes they'll ask me the link. They ask me like yo, let's go to a concert or oh, I have That's a concert fine. happening. Let's go. So this is that relationship I have with them. Also, it's like if we're going up towards like how busy I I am like. It could be a Tuesday that last summer. I'm booked ten days to ten people that day. Like it could be any day. I'm booked. So that's fine. So yeah, I just loved it like that. So I done. Um, what's your favorite? Like you, you kind of spoke about it in your last answer. But what's your favorite part about um cutting hair or being a barber? Let's just what's your favorite part about so, it? So my favorite part about being a barber isn't really like the fact of cutting hair because I like cutting hair. Yeah, I like doing it, but in reality, it's like the conversation in a way where it's like I break out of my shell mm-hmm. and 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 tune and have a conversation with my client in a way. So it's like that I consider myself a therapist where it's just like um. The, the per, like my client might tell me like yo I have girl problems bro like what should I do I'm just like yo bro I'm not gonna lie like 
like, you gotta like work through it. I'll say, I'll be really, like, because I have a bunch of clients, you know, we from the city, right. so prideful, like they they want to argue or something like that. I'm like, bro, that's not gonna go nowhere, especially with a girl. Like, like, yeah. like you gotta stay calm, collected. She's gonna come back, especially if the situation is minimal. Like, I'll yeah, be right, telling right. her, like, yo, bro, everything's gonna be good. Like, you don't gotta worry about stuff like that. Right. So it's just stuff like that. That's what I really love about barbering. It's just like, so many. That's question I want to get into. Do you? At, even though you have a passion for be, uh, being a barber and you have um, a strong work ethic when it comes to this um, career, do you see yourself cutting hair for the rest of your life? Um, I don't. So my goal in reality is to retire when I'm 25 years old from cutting hair. Okay. So uh, not to say I'm going to stop working in general. It's just like I want my my business or what I want to do in the future to carry on with my life. Cutting hair, like I see a lot of barbers get stuck where it's just like, you know, borrowing is good money or in case maybe you right. could manage your time well, but it's not something that you would want to get stuck in because you've seen barbers have 20 years of experience, 30 years of experience, and they stay in the same barbershop their whole life. It's like, right. is that the lifestyle I really want? It's not. It's like, I, that's that's the reason why I said coming to college really opened my eyes where it's just like, fine. I, at first, if I never came to college, I probably would have been working, like I said, 24-7. Right. But now I come to the point where it's just like, I want to live life. I want to retire at that age so I have... I have the availability to do stuff that I want to do with my friends or my family or whatever it may be. So yeah, so 25 is the goal. Gotcha. So yeah. I bet. And then if you come with Sharon, talk a little bit about some of the business ventures that you see yourself tapping into when you retire from barbering at 25. So one thing I want to step into uh, very recently like, that I want to do is like like simple stuff like vending machine ATMs. This is just something to just touch the water, but that's not something that I want to pursue uh, right, long right, term. Right. It's just something to touch the water. But what I really want to do is with my own product line, like hair care, um, like face wash. It could be barber utensils, like anything Fire. that's related to barbering and hair care because... Uh, a bunch of people come to me asking me and stuff like that, and I and I answer the question. But why? If if I can, I can also answer it, but I can also give them something to help them. Like maybe it might be dangerous support. It could be something where like my hair is dry. Boom, I got you. What to do after the braids? What type of mousse I could use? What type of what type of conditioner? I want to have all of that. So yeah, also some disinfectant sprays. There's only one good in disinfectant spray that everybody uses in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know, I, I can't see why I can't make one that's even better that right. could be used worldwide just like that one. Right. Yeah. Um, Manny, I'd like to ask this question to all my guests to get a scope of how they're feeling. How's your mental health? Um, so in reality, I would say at the moment, I'm happy today. I'm happy today is my off day, I'm just chilling, but in reality, I'm working hard, stressed out, like I have a bunch of assignments to do, I have a bunch of haircuts to do. But all, all in all, I would say it's nothing to complain about, I would say, because like I said before, this is this is all I ever wanted. So and now that I'm saying my my schedule is getting a lot better, I would say that my mental health is is, is good. It's average. I would say probably stuff I need to improve on, but right. uh, nothing crazy. Just I got to focus on myself, focus more on my business and be happy. That's always my goal and goal. I best see that. Um, we spoke about it. Well, I'm off the camera. Um, before we dive into the next topic, can you explain to people what a master barber is? So a master barber is basically someone who like he, he has a master barber's license. He could go, he could work at any shop. He could go anywhere in the United States and work anywhere. He could open his own barber shop and all that stuff. But also a mentor, he could have apprenticeships, uh, an apprentice. He got mm -hmm. five up to five apprentices so people that work under him. Okay. Basically, I'm an apprentice to somebody. So yeah. And how do you get to that status of being a master barber? So there's a, there's two ways that you could go as a master barber. You could go to barber school, which is about a few year process with a lot of money. But another way is a apprenticeship program that I'm in currently, which is two years of being an apprentice under a master barber. Um, and then after those two years, you're eligible to take the master barber exam, okay. where they just test your haircutting skills, your um, you know how your cleanliness, like how clean you are, stuff right. like that. So, uh, yeah, and that's, then once you pass that, you're a master barber. I don't say that. Um, so talk to us a little bit about your master barber. So my master barber, his name is Zav Cuts. That's my guy. Yes, sir. Shout out to him. Nah, shout out to my boy Zav. I love him. Like He, in reality, like, I can say any other barber, but he, and when everyone, when whoever asks me, like, who is your master barber, that's, that's him, Zav Cuss. Because he, he taught me everything. He took me under his wing. It was quarantine. He texted me like, yo, bro, 
Uh, he was another one. When Cheeky left, mm -hmm. he was another barber who used to come out here. He's very young, so he's 22. Uh, yeah, he's 22. He's very, very young. He graduated college. He's like 20, 22, 23, but he graduated college. Mm -hmm. uh, just just how basically I'm doing uh, SUNY Passburg, and he came to the city. He was he was bugging out. Yeah. He, was, he was cutting everybody. So he took me under his wing. He texted me like, yo, bro, pull up. I'm going to teach you a lot of things. I pulled up every day. 80, 87 shit is really my guy. Like, right. I appreciate so much that he's done for me. He's 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 gifted me barber equipment that I never had before. Like, That's fine. Yeah, it's just certain stuff that I could have like. I owe him so much. Like nothing, nothing I say could never have meant to the much I owe him. So. Yes, sir. Shout out to Zach Cuts. Really an inspiration. He cut anybody who's anybody who's cut their hair. That's a like, fact. Right? Zach cuts everybody. Yes, sir. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk about another well-known barber in the industry in regards to New York City. Talk to me about um, Edwin Too Sharp. Edwin Too Sharp, he's funny, he's, he's a clown, <laughs> he's mad crazy. He's uh, So my boy Papaleta, he's like cool with him. And, you know, we talked a few times. He texted me before where he's like, oh, I like your work. I like his work. So, yeah, it's just like he, we, we've cut a bunch of the NYC drill rappers, you know, all of them in the scene. So, you know, they'll come to him. They'll come to me like, yo, I just went to Edwin. He said, what's up? Like, literally, so, stuff like that. That's so, fine. it was just, it was just be chill vibes like that. Like, I we, I, we have yet to link up, probably do a collab, hopefully one day. But, yeah, it'll be a, a cool vibe. Edwin, you know, you can hit yes, me sir. up whenever, so cuts. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Edwin, you got to tap in, my boy. Now, hell, you got to tap in with the hood jails, too, you know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, we got a couple more questions left. Um, Manny, what advice do you have for the next young barber that was like you, cutting hair for free, trying to get reps, trying to cut anybody's hair that will give them an opportunity? What advice do you have for the next uh, young barber that was in your shoes a couple years ago? Yo, I just gotta say, you gotta stay dedicated, bro, like, 100%. Like, this, this, not only just with barbering, it's just like, in this world in general, where like, you have to really stay focused on, on what you want to do. So with barbering and especially learn from others as well. So if you have the opportunity to go somewhere, you can't be lazy, especially right. when you're starting up. It's just like you gotta be very, very disciplined. Where is the point where it's just like, if you if you see somebody trying to help you, you gotta go and take it. If you see somebody uh, that wants a haircut from you, you gotta go and take it. Any anything. Right. So yeah, that's the only thing I gotta say. Stay dedicated and disciplined. Everything will be good. It's right, oh, write down a journal too, so you can see your process, your process, your progress because. Yeah. That's the only way you'll see you leveling up in a way. So right. that way you won't you won't think they're stagnant because you gotta give gratitude to where you were before and how you are now. Right, right. right well said, well said. Uh, uh, Manny, who do you wanna see next on the Hood Journal? Man, I wanna see so uh, bottom wise, I would love to see my boy Zap cousin. You could go and tap in with my boy Zap. Yes, sir. So hell yeah, you know I I try to hook you up with that. And uh Long Suni Oswego. I like to see more um you know, a little bit more girls on the channel, probably some nail tech, uh, some nails techs, oh, wax by Lou, just a few okay, waxes, okay. something like that, probably a little dis different aspect of, of businesses in Oswego, right. but yeah, definitely with that, wax by Lou and Zaf Cuts, I'd like to see them in the interview, so yeah. I bet say that. Um, Zach, and you said Wax by Lou? Yeah, Wax by yes, Lou. Yes, sir. We got to tap in. And I definitely got to get more women, more self-care services mm -hmm. on the platform, so I appreciate you for that. I right, Manny, that marks the end of the interview, but this is a talking shit segment. Anybody want to shout out? Anything good? Anything you want to get off your chest? Tell the people what they want to hear. Yo, it's your boy Cuz get a haircut with me, you know. Uh, give love to my boy Axel too. Uh, you yes, know, sir. shout I out Axel. Yeah, shout out my boy Axel Cuz, he's up and coming. But yeah, if you haven't got a cut by me, you know where to go. See Cuz that booksy. And hell yeah, I'm gonna see y'all then. Yes, sir. Manny, thank you so much for this interview. Shout out you, shout out Sweep Cuz, shout out everything that you're doing. you saving lives, you're impacting lives. But you saving lives at the same time. Thank you so much for locking in with me, for having this great conversation, and keep doing your thing, my boy. Right, thank you, bro, so much. Yes, sir. That's Shout out to Hood Journal. Yes, sir, that's a wrap. Times change, but I'm still here. Everybody else, it just disappear. I've been down bad, I don't have no fear. I treat every day like a new year. I'm gonna be a star, I belong there. If it ain't about money, I don't go near. I'm still the same, my nigga. Yeah, I'm still the same, my nigga. Times change, but I'm still here Everybody else, they just disappear I've been down bad, I don't have no fear I treat every day like a new